the Falcon Heavy launch a giant hoax? No. Oh, we'll find out yeah. more on today's Must Watch. We've got hot breaking news. We're fresh off the priests. We're definitely on the cutting edge here and definitely not a week behind or anything like that. No, did you hear? No. Elon Musk and SpaceX made history by launching the Falcon Heavy, the largest privately built rocket to ever fly, and the most powerful rocket currently in service by a factor of two. And it's, it's still tripping me out. I mean, I'm tripping bulls here. <laughs> and it didn't even blow up or anything. Yeah, I've seen rockets blow up so many different ways. That's right, I'm proud to say that there was no projectile dysfunction. His rocket kept on thrusting all the way through that atmosphere into outer space. Dad atmosphere. Pretty good, right? <laughs> However, the flight did not go perfectly. While two of the Falcon Heavy cores were able to land and be recovered, the third core was not able to have that happen to it. Oh, and we've, we've just gotten confirmation. Oh. Oh. Contact was lost with the center core before it tried to land, and we waited with bated breath until we found out that its thrusters hadn't fired correctly, and it splattered into the ocean at 300 miles per hour. <laughs> That's hard. The successes of the Falcon Heavy test launch prove the viability of large, reusable, recyclable rockets that could revolutionize how we get to the moon, or even, yes, dare I say it. Say it. I dare you. <laughs> Mars, dude. Now this is a pretty big deal, so prepare for at least two more stories about it. I don't know which one's offensive. Here, you get both. It's 2018, where are our flying cars, Dan? They're in I ask you every week. They're in space, you dang friend. Thank you. That's right, they are in space. Because to cap off the historic Falcon Heavy launch, the payload wasn't just some hunk of boring metal that other places have used to test rockets. You know, they'd launch like a block of concrete or something like that. I mean, that's so boring. <laughs> no, Elon Musk used his personal cherry red Tesla Roadster complete with a star man, a mannequin wearing the SpaceX spacesuit, the real one. And he had don't panic right on the dash. Mm hmm What a nerd. This is the nerdiest thing that's ever happened. Yeah, it's way better than just launching a USB drive with your name on it into space. Looking at you, Asgardia. Uh, astronomers in Arizona have uh. spotted it flying through the cosmos, and NASA has officially logged it as a celestial body, which is pretty cool. It is. Yeah. And obviously, because this car was launched on the top of a rocket, it is now officially the fastest car ever, and it has traveled further than any car ever in human history. Technically accurate, which is the best kind of accurate. Your move, Vin Diesel. But just where is that car going? Elon Musk wanted to park his cherry red Tesla Roadster in orbit around Mars, but he overshot the red planet as he put it on Twitter. <clears throat> Said burn successful, exceeded Mars orbit, and kept going to the asteroid belt. Don't you hate when you can't find parking? I hate when you put the emphasis on ass. Would you prefer I put it on troid belt? Yeah, dude. You freak. Asteroid. <laughs> yes. Which, if you're gonna fail, you might as well fail spectacularly. But is the Roadster actually gonna end up in the asteroid belt? Some independent astronomers ran the math from some revised data, and they discovered that the Roadster isn't going quite that far. It'll traverse around the sun once every 18.8 .8 months, and it will cross paths with Mars twice during each of its orbits. You know, I have a sneaking suspicion that they did this in a specific trajectory such that if they make the timeline to Mars, as Elon wants to get to Mars, you'll be able to look up and see the Roadster at some point. But I think they're I, that nerdy. Well, no, I think what they're gonna do is, by the time they get there, it'll arrive just to be valeted at the Mars colony. That'd be so cool. And of course, any cool scientific breakthrough is almost immediately ruined by conspiracy theorists because the internet. We suck. The dual wretched hives of internet scum and internet villainy known as Reddit and Twitter immediately filled with theories about this launch. And sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference between the joking ones and the serious ones. That's what makes conspiracy theories so sinister. One popular one that was probably a joke is that Starman is really a dead body that supervillain Elon Musk just disposed of in space without anyone thinking twice. And we wanted to refute that one because yeah. we know that inside the Starman suit isn't a dead body, but rather a legion of Elon Musk's venomous bits. How many bats could he fit in there? <laughs> Probably 20. 
Okay. More serious conspiracies, the serious conspiracies though, try to prove that the rocket never released the Tesla Roadster into space at all, and the entire thing happened on what internet numbskulls refer to as a CGI studio. To which Elon Musk had a reply saying, You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> Like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake. When the two rocket cores landed, they produced uh, two double sonic booms that could be heard miles away. You would have to, this, this CGI studio would have to be miles for every, yeah. and every single person for miles around would have to be lying and that is dumb. Yeah, your brain would have to be flat to believe that. Ho <laughs> ho! So when encountering conspiracy theories on the internet, we wanted to give you an official Musk Watch word of advice. Don't engage with the trolls. In fact, I once engaged a troll online and now we're getting married! Which is beautiful but deeply expensive, so learn from my mistakes. Never engage a troll on the internet. It's legally bonding. Bond. It's legally bondage. Whoa. Hey, it's time for your must-see moment of the week. Must-see! SM? SM? <laughs> hey, if you're into it. Our must-see moment of the week is a glimpse at Elon Musk watching the historic Falcon Heavy launch just last I week. I actually really, really like this It's video. awesome. Just look at... Look at the utter childlike fascination. He was so surprised. I believe his his... I'm quoting here. And you'll have to bleep it, but he said, holy flying f that thing took off. Which, <laughs> it just showed, like, he was as amazed as the rest of us were, which I really appreciate. Yeah. he seems excited exactly. about what he's doing. You want people to be excited about what they're doing, and yeah. not just, like, watching, like, throwing billions of dollars at something, being like, hey, we got I'm it. bored, what's next? Hey, I, I can't think of anything that... I would see launch that would make me as happy as he looks in those photos. I don't know, Kyle. Didn't you just launch a new Because Science channel filled with brand new episodes as well as vlogs and live streams? I did. Uh... Wow! Yeah. Not not nearly as cool as the launch looked. Or the Falcon Heavy. Well, hey, check it out. That's because you haven't launched your editor Charles into space. I would, though. Maybe he's in the suit. No. Anyway, that's all the time we have this episode of Musk Watch. Yes, bye! Right, thanks, everyone. Hope you had a good time. <laughs> Lots more excitement coming. Thanks for watching this week's Musk Watch. Now remember to like and comment below with what you think Elon Musk actually disposed of in the trunk of that Tesla Roadster he launched. Which is actually in the front. And after you sent your Musky stories to Dan Casey's Sci-File and Nerdist with the hashtag Musk make sure to head over to my new Because Science channel across all platforms, wherever platforms are sold. Also, maybe watch The Dan Cave if you're bored. <laughs> yeah, do that too. We I know. do other things. It's a show, dudes.